It is Monday morning at 10.15. I've been here about 54 minutes. Um, it looks like many trucks are delivering coils to this particular location. But uh, they did give me a door assignment. Uh, me and another guy, he's pulled in right now. So as soon as he unloads his coil, I'm looking at him right now. I will be able to back up and unload mine. I've, uh, I've uh, unsecured and untarped everything up to uh, leaving two chains still on the product is what they uh, requested uh, prior to pulling in the door. So everything's put away and er so the coil still has two chains on it. And uh, once, uh, once they're done, then I can uh, pull in and unload mine. And we'll see what we get next. Okay, let's see if I can complete this accurately while listening to the CB and, and watching what other trucks do. I'm in Centerville, Georgia. And I'm heading to New Century, Kansas. I don't know if I... I think I may have been to Kansas one other time in the truck. I'm, I'm trying to... Uh, let's see, I can probably pan to the right and uh, not necessarily give away what uh, facility I'm at. I'm not looking through my glasses right now. So... Um, Somebody, I'm sure there's a lot of you that are going to recognize where I'm at, but uh, you don't have to worry about asking me because I will not say anything. <laughs> I attempted to, they provide a, there's a sign right to the left. Um, it's got a phone number on it, so I can't really show that. Because, you know, there's going to be people that would call that number just to harass these people, so... I'm going to avoid that. The uh, <clears throat> I called and facepalm. I said, I said hello, and I said yes, ma'am. Never, never try to identify gender of somebody in your efforts to be polite. I I would recommend just you know presenting the information you're trying to present um, without trying to you know, be super polite. Anyway, they, that person on the phone uh, informed me that they, they have a CB channel that they monitor at this particular facility. And that if my, I don't have a CB or my CB is not working, then I can walk to their guard shack and pass along the information. So I was like, okay, my CB may not work that well because I, you know, it's not tuned. I, you know, I hooked it up when I started this job, and I'm hoping it, you know, it suffices, but I, I've always had problems in the past. Maybe it's been fixed, because I've tightened some things down. But anyway, I called on the CB on the directed channel, and the same person that was on the phone answered the radio, and then took my information. So apparently they can't necessarily take information over the phone here. I'm not sure exactly why. Um, but over any open frequency, well, not any, but the, the particular channel that they describe, that they monitor, that's the channel you can provide your information on. So I was happy to oblige. <laughs> my appointment, it's uh, 3.55, and my appointment's at 5.30. So they gave me instructions on how to prepare the deck of my trailer, which I did. And, uh, see, it's a little bit louder than normal because I have to monitor it, but that wasn't them. That was another truck. Um, so once I get, um, I get, I'm going to put the address of where I'm going actually into my, uh, GPS and figure out how I'm going to get there in the shortest quickest way possible. I've got basically a full tank of fuel and death, but uh, yeah, going to Kansas from Georgia. So, and that uh, it delivers on um, the 23rd. So the assumption is that I'll get a load from that part of the world or the U S and it will take me back towards my house for Christmas time. Let's see here. Yeah.
Okay, here's another non-descriptive uh, shot that doesn't reveal any uh, phone information or where I'm particularly at. But if anybody's hauled steel from a place that has uh, really likes blue and yellow, then you probably know where this is at. But that is the uh, <clears throat> the tarping shed. You can see they have. A, let me see if I can hold this still. Um, the the uh, walkways that are level with the uh, truck trailer bed. Um, actually, um, you drive through it, and they mechanically um, tighten up next to the trailer and provide fall protection. So you can get up on top of your load, secure it, tarp it. But if you need to adjust anything, you have to move the walking planks, the gangways, or the ganchons, whatever you want to call it. You have to uh, move them out of the way if you want to uh, attach your chains, tighten your straps, um, apply bungees to your tarps. Um, so there's a lot of getting off, um, either removing um, the walkways or putting the walkways next to your truck, so, um, which is typical at this particular company. It's, uh, it's one of their safety features, which uh, we as truck drivers really appreciate. Other than that, um, they provide uh, large laboratories for us to utilize. And uh, there's actually uh, two, I think that's the, the female bathroom over there. I can't remember if they were labeled. But, uh, so once I get there, there's a large instruction sheet that I received and, uh, you can kind of see in my rear view mirror, rear view, my side mirror, uh, that my deck is, has six boards on it and they're all evenly spaced seven feet apart to the best of my, um, calculating abilities. Once I've uh, gotten loaded, and it is slightly rainy weather, so from my the instruction sheet that they give us, my understanding is that I'm to drive straight to the tarping shed, and then go to the uh, scale house once everything is completed for paperwork and whatnot. But I'm not sure exactly the procedure for getting back onto the scale once tarped. So I'm kind of watching what other trucks do. Because if they're all proceeding directly to the tarping shed without scaling first, I'll have to watch that. But it's like like I said, the the rain it's it's kind of really light right now, so people may actually be stopping at which I've been watching stopping at the scale house prior to going to the tarping shed. So we shall see. Then I'll get loaded. Uh, secured with chains if uh, I'm not ex exactly sure what type of steel product I am getting here because uh, they do have spe specific instructions if you use chains they have to use edge protectors so um, that will be uh, interesting to see what actual product I get so I know how this is going to be done my load assignment says I'm going to be getting about oh, I'm going to be getting over 46,000 pounds worth of steel to put on my deck. There was, and it may have been seen earlier, but there was a truck parked right there that probably will resemble what I look like in the future, or my truck, because I don't look like a truck. I hope not. But that's it. It's uh, it's the waiting game right now. Um. <clears throat> see how many turn that down so you can see that I have uh, I've been here 22 minutes it's currently uh, 3 oh usually my GPS tells me when I hit, hit the uh, eastern time zone but it's uh, 3 oh one Central Standard Time, 401 Eastern Time. And you can kind of, it's, this changes. Sometimes it's orange and sometimes it's not. So I'm not sure why that is. But anyway, I have four hours left on my driving clock and four hours and 28 on my uh, 14. So I'll end up using, because the 14 hour clock, once it starts, it doesn't stop until you get a 10 hour reset or a 10 hour break. 
So that will continue to count down, and I'm pretty sure it's going to take longer to than 28 minutes to uh, get in, uh, get my product, and get secured and tarped and paperwork. So um, I will be burning my driving time while preparing my truck for transportation. So, and uh, I'm sure in another seven minutes will constitute a 30 minute break or a 30 minute time reset for my eight hour uh, rest break mandatory. Um, that'll kick up, but it'll only, uh, uh, even though there's, it resets the eight hour rest break, I, I still only have, I'll only have like four hours or less um, once my load is secure. So that's about it for now. Um, once I get it, um, I'm going to go ahead and load this into my GPS to see uh, where I'm going exactly and how I'm going to get there. So I have 791 miles uh, that I'll be driving, which is really close to what is authorized. 13 hours and 9 minutes. Um, so yeah, there's the route I will be taking. Um, I can make some minor tweaks, but it's really not worth it for the out of route that this particular uh, assignment gives me. <clears throat> so, oops. I live there where it says 270. Unfortunately, there's not enough hours on my clock to make it there tonight. Otherwise, I'd be staying at my house, which is um, very rarely occurred to where I've, uh, you know, when you drive past my house and my I'm out of hours, um, it's often nice to stay at my house versus inside my truck or a truck stop. But um, every once in a, you know, I think it maybe two, maybe three times that I've done that. Uh, in my one year here with uh, Maverick Transportation. Um, so, but unfortunately, I do have to go through Crashville. And uh, I may route myself around that. But I've got basically two days to get there. My delivery appointment's not until 10 in the afternoon. So, which is kind of... So I really don't need to go around Nashville if I don't really... Somebody's calling in to the guardhouse. Go ahead. Hey, this is Max Grant. Check that order. Pull 163223. There's some. <clears throat> I don't know if that's due to smoking, but some people have really rough voices. Anyway, that's it for now. Once I get loaded, then we'll we'll see what this stuff is and uh, what it looks like on the back of my truck. Good evening. It is uh, 7.23 Eastern Time or 6.25 Eastern Time. I've been here over three hours, but I am loaded, secured, tarped, and um, I was parked <coughs> over in that area towards the, the road. I did verify on my load assignment that they do have um, parking, uh, truck parking available here, so... That is the only reason I'm staying here. I still have an hour, ha had like an hour and 15 minutes now. It's like an hour and six still left on my drive clock. So if I needed to, I could drive somewhere. But it's only 13 hours um, to go where I need to go. And I'm going to drive 11 of that tomorrow. And it doesn't deliver until I have a set appointment of 10 o'clock on the 23rd. So... I had plenty of time to get there. <clears throat> if I was able to deliver early, I I, I would. But uh, the way I read this particular assignment is that I have to be there. I can't unload early or late. You know, well, I never want to unload late, but can't unload early either. You've got a set appointment time. So, and what do I have? <clears throat> I can't really show you because it's like, you know, pitch black over here. So I'll show you tomorrow during my solid 11 hours of driving day. And, uh, but I've got, uh, what I call six by six I beams. Um, uh, they're 45 feet long. I've also got, uh, 20 foot bundles of other product like channel, 
uh, it's probably eight inch channel and uh, five inch angle iron. So, <clears throat> and those are all 20 foot bundles. So I've got 46,800 pounds and I've used every chain I have to cover up to um, 64,000 pounds of securement value, but I had to secure for length due to the length of the product. So, um, and, uh, but, uh, even I think, uh, let's see if I go for length, which was, uh, 42 feet. So, uh, I really only need technically, I guess six times eight is 48 seven chains because you take your length divide it by eight this is the maverick method it's not the minimum required by the fmcsa this is maverick's minimum which they kind of plus up <clears throat> so you take that your length since uh, i need more for length than i do for the weight um i have if the longest piece i have is 42 feet so if you divide 42 by 8, you really get um, how many individual chains can you use? Well, 6. Um, to cut, you know, because 5 times 8 chains would be 40,000 pounds. Um, or 40 feet. And since I exceed that, I have to add a chain to cover that. And then I have to, so that covers the length plus 1. That's my understanding of it. It's the length divided by eight plus one. And uh, so I may, it may have only required six um, at a minimum seven. I've got eight on there. Um, it just worked out that way because this way each 20 foot section has four, uh, four chains on it. <clears throat> and uh, there, that's it for today. And uh, it should be a pleasant drive tomorrow. I'll be driving kind of close to my house. And if I can get there within, you know, eight hours, which it may be. Let me check here. Because <clears throat> I can do my 30-minute break there. And my wife likes it when I do my 30-minute breaks near our house. Because then she can meet me for lunch or whatnot. <clears throat> it takes a while for this to compute. Oh, <laughs> Instead of looking at blank sky, you can see it calculate. It is 728. Proceed to the highlighted route. Oh, man. Um, it's having a difficult time focusing in the dark. But it does say 8 hours and 33 minutes, which means that exceeds the time I'll need to have a break. So, it. sorry, honey, it won't happen. So, let me get rid of that. <clears throat> and other than that, I'm set to go for tomorrow, and uh, we should have a rather uh, wonderful day driving. I'm, I may even get up at 5 still, because I want to... Proceed uh, to the highlighted route. Get as uh, early a start and early a finish as I can. And uh, But then again, I don't have to. <laughs> I could start at 6... And technically finish by like uh, 5 30 6 o'clock so it'll only be like a 12 hour day because you have to account for your 30 minute break and your pre-trip and post trip so I mean you really even though you get 11 hours of drive time it takes like 12 hours to complete that uh, in my in my opinion so anyway that's it for tonight or today yeah it's almost Christmas Merry Christmas everybody